trying, folks. I really am. I'm trying to get it done. So please bear with me, okay? I'm not having a lot of luck right now. And I'm wondering if it's logging me out of this. Every time I log into this, so I don't know if it's running, it's running, if it's not, it's not. So I'm going to try to go with it. If I don't have chat, I don't have chat. Sorry, chat. Amuse yourselves. Um, I need the chicken. So I'll cut the chicken just in half. It's a smaller piece. Toss that in there. I'm actually going to cut three chicken breasts. It's a lot in this pot, I know. But I'm putting three in there so that my puppy babies will have something to eat tonight besides dog food. They've been used for so long. And I'll turn that on halfway, put it on medium heat. Okay, so I am still running live. Yay, maybe, possibly, could be. <sighs> okay. I see people now. Hi, peoples. I'm so sorry. I'm having technical issues, technical issues. Chicken pot pie tonight. Semi-homemade. Um... Pillsbury pie crust or store brand. Any, it's pre-prepared, and so you don't have to worry about it too much. I've got chicken in water with chicken bouillon and some onion powder. I have peas and carrots in a can. I have potatoes in a can. And my favorite special ingredient, sharp cheddar cheese. Those are all going into the chicken pot pie. Hi, Jill. Hi, Ink Maths. Peach was in here earlier. I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I've still got y'all or not. So just, you know, give me a heads up if you're still here. Okay, I cut the chickens in half. I put them in the pot. The pot is going to boil. The chicken is going to cook. And then we're going to be able to put this together. All right. Let's move that over there. I don't know what I've said. I don't know what I've done. It's been live. Um, got this baking dish. It's rounded on the bottom. It's my favorite chicken pot pie pan. All right. Move that out of my way. One of the ways to help kind of make things work a little bit better is if you take the, the pot pie or the pie crusts out early and let them warm up just a little bit so that they're not fresh from a cold refrigerator because they do get kind of tough when they're cold. Okay. And the thing about these is they get tucked in right here whenever they're made. If you just give it a little bit of attention and you take it real slow and easy, it'll unroll out just like that.
<laughs> well, Mass, um, what are you having for supper? Corn dogs and fries. Excellent, Jill. Um, Sonic was having 50 cent, was it 50 cent corn dogs today? Yay. I'm not a huge Sonic fan, but I am a huge corn dog fan. Love corn dogs. One of these days I'm going to try to make homemade corn dogs. Nothing this involved. Boiling some vegetables and threw a breaded chicken thing in the oven. Okay. Egg. Breaded chicken things are cool, too. In fact, my oldest found my spicy chicken breast from my Wendy's uh, spicy chicken sandwich that I had, and he used it to put in something that he was making. I don't remember what it was. But, yeah, I like it. I typically find that I don't care for pre-prepared breaded chicken things. Chicken Kiev. I suppose that's a better description than breaded chicken thing. <laughs> Do you have cheese in it? Uh, let's see, Chicken Kiev. That's chicken wrapped around... Oh, it's been so long since I had Chicken Kiev. Um, what is that? Is it chicken? Is it chicken and Swiss around broccoli? Is that what it is? Is that chicken Kiev? Garlic butter. Okay, garlic butter. Very cool. Okay, I need some aluminum foil and a Ziploc bag. And a piece of parchment paper. Now, this is not part of the cooking. This is part of saving the rest of the chicken. So this is not a necessary step. And it's okay to do without this. Especially if you use your... If you buy, like, a package like I do of big chicken breasts and you don't need to use all of them at one time. If you're going to cook all of your chicken at once, that's great. Um, we're a family of four, and so we don't have chicken every night, and so it's just kind of easier for us to buy a bigger package and break it up and then separate it out for use at different times during the week or the month. All righty, hope it's okay. Nothing's burning or singeing or dripping or any of those other things that can happen while you're not paying attention to your food. All right. Now, put the, the parchment paper in here just to make it a little bit easier to separate from the aluminum foil after it's frozen. Put, the, put it on an angle like this. And it's easier to wrap up. Close one end, close the other end, and voila, it's ready to go in a bag and pop into the freezer. I'm going to stick it in the fridge for right now because I don't want to take it downstairs to the freezer. And I may decide I want some more later in the week. Weekend. And washing those chickeny hands. So, as I said, I've had a few technical issues tonight. I don't know what kept messing up. If it was my phone, my tablet, my account, operator error, or what. So I apologize for all of that earlier. This was a spur-of-the-moment stream. I decided just to do this because I had a bit of a meltdown the last time I was going to do one. Hey. Was going to do a cooking stream, and I just thank you very much for checking in on that. I was going to do a cooking stream a couple of weeks ago, or last week. I can't remember when it exactly was. I think it was last week. And I was really struggling with some 
inferiority issues and some failure stuff that just really had nothing to do with cooking or with streaming. But when I went to turn the stream on, I decided I couldn't do it. So, I felt like, you know what, I can't let that get in the way. I've got to do it. I've got to do this thing, this cooking thing, this streaming thing, so that I can prove to myself that it's possible. So, here I am again today, sort of off the cuff, spur of the moment, doing one of my favorite dishes that's super, super easy. Now, I may be committing blasphemy for some of you all, but I am a top crust pot pie maker and a bottom crust pot pie maker. I like to make a full pot pie. And I know some people think that that is just horrible, that pot pies don't need a bottom crust and a top crust that one's enough. Uh-uh. Not for me. Gotta have both. Got to have both. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start putting my filling together. I forgot a little bit of cream of chicken soup. It gives it just a little bit of a creamy texture on the inside. It doesn't have to be. Um, you don't have to include it. You can do a pure vegetable. That's fine. Oh, shoot. I forgot to do one of my favorite things. Okay, Jill. See you when you come back. Um, one of the things that I'll, I'll sometimes do is I'll open these up at the very beginning of the process, and I'll add the liquid that's in the cans straight into my broth that I'm using for my chicken, and then that way, I don't waste the liquids that are in here because I really don't need the liquids in the pot pie filling itself. And it just saves me a little bit of water and maybe somewhere down the road, I actually get some vegetable nutrients and vitamins out of the water. I don't know. I won't swear by that. But I'll tell you one thing. It sure convinces me that it's better for me. So I'm just going to go ahead and empty that in there now. I'm not going to get as many of the great stuff out of it, but I don't feel as guilty about not having as many vegetables. And yes, I know the title is Three Dishes. I'm playing with that. That's not something I'm super comfortable with right at the moment. Um, maybe it'll be three dishes in one show. Maybe it'll be three dishes a week. I don't know yet. I'm still kind of playing with what I want to do with y'all on stream. Um, trying to find a way to make this work for me and you and everybody else. Throw those in there. Get a little spatula right here. Hey Jess, I, I was just listening to the radio here in our local region. And there was some kind of thing, it was, it has to do with 3D construction and blocks, and it sure sounded like a Lego thing, but I don't know if that's exactly what it was. Um, I'll have to do some more information searching on that to get the details on it, but I just wanted to tie that in and say that your um, interview the other night on... The transgender show, I cut the very end with you showing off some of your Lego builds. I love Legos. I love builds. Your builds look fantastic. So thank you for sharing that with us the other night. It's a long way to get to that. I know. That's where my brain is today. It's a long way to get a very short distance. Throw these away. Okay. I go through a lot of these towels. I love towels. I want a towel with me at all times. So, 
chicken is coming along nicely. And what I'm going to do in just a little bit is I'm going to shred that up and put that in here and mix that all together so it can go in here, the crust. And then I'll lay the cheese on top of it and then put the top crust on it. And so what we'll have is we'll have a crust filling cheese crust. So there you go. That's the plan. And if I've not, this is not, oops, now I've got pickle juice all over my floor. Um, if I've not shared this, for those of you all who need pickles, uh, Clausen Kosher Dill Spears are amazing. Uh, go out and get some. You can get the big one like I did. I don't know why Walmart normally only carried the smaller ones. But the last time I went to the store to buy pickles, they had that one. So, nice thing about pickles, though, cleans up my floor very nicely. But it will smell like pickles in here. This is not going back in the used pile. Okay. Julia, I know, and I'm sorry. I, yeah, I'm, I couldn't get it to, to work right, and I just kept aborting the, the stream. I don't know how, I don't know why, but yeah, we're just going to call it operator error and leave it at that. So I'm glad you came back. Thank you. All right. And let's see. There are a couple of different things that you can do with chicken pot pie. You can make it a little more spicy. You can make it, um, you can put something called, um, oh goodness, I can't remember what that stuff is. No, oh, it's, it's escaped my memory. But anyway, it's a seasoning that goes along with chicken. It's not specifically designed, but you can put it like in dumplings or things like that. Um, but tonight I'm just putting the onion powder in there, N nothing extra. I'm not even putting garlic in there, and I'm a garlic fiend. I love garlic, and, you know, it always seems like I never can get enough. Between garlics and pickles, I'm probably well set for any vampire apocalypse that's coming. So, what else is going on in the world? Oh, yeah, we got a new president. Imagine that. I don't know about y'all, but I tuned in to the inauguration yesterday, and I got a little weepy at times. It was, it was special for me. I remember when inaugurations were boring to me, and that's really kind of sad because I've always been a history buff, and I kind of liked uh, government and politics and those kind of things. Julie, I am doing fantastic, except for my little fumbling of the technology earlier. I, uh, I'll come back to the inauguration in just a minute, so I'll address Julie's question of how I am. I had coffee with a new friendship um, that I'm developing with actually a person who is a colleague in the profession that I used to have. She and I had never met before, but I reached out to her, and we started a friendship, and so it's kind of nice. I was able to sit and enjoy some wonderful coffee at um, Onyx Coffee in downtown Bentonville. It was really some good stuff. I had uh, something called the uh, Onyx Delight. It was really good. Uh, if you have an Onyx Coffee near you, which I doubt that you do unless you live in Northwest Arkansas, and I don't know um, if any of you watching are in Northwest Arkansas, but the Onyx Delight, amazing. But anyway, uh, we sat down and we just had a great talk today. But anyway, the inauguration, I am, oh, it was fun. Lots of fun. Um, we got to talk things like religion and politics and self-care and family and all those great topics that you just really, especially if you're starved for adult conversation, most of my daily conversation involves things like, let's go potty, come on, 
quit barking and that kind of stuff. So, and then I also talk to the dogs. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I don't have adult conversations, and so it's kind of fun to have those. But back to the inauguration, um, it was really, you know, as a kid, inaugurations didn't mean much to me, but I watched Obama's first inauguration, and I watched yesterday's. And when Kamala Harris stepped up and took her oath of office, that's when I really teared up. It was amazing to see her stepping into a role that has been dominated by white males since the founding of our nation. To see progress coming for a group of people in two or three different arenas who have not had that power and that voice. It's, it was just breathtaking to, to witness that moment in history. So, yeah, that's, that's where I am. Um, oh, okay, Jill, I understand. Um, your server is definitely worthy of attention. So, uh, what else? What else? What else? Oh, if you have not, if you don't follow me on Facebook or Twitter, I have, I used to do movie reviews, and I would do them in such a way that I could help people, especially families, who are, who had young kids, who might be interested in taking them to see a particular movie, or people who have a certain sensitivity to things like violence or language or sex, I would do movie reviews to kind of give people a heads up on the content of a movie, but also kind of speak to the technical aspects of it. And so I kind of laid off of that for a little bit, but I'm back now, and I put my first one up. It is on Facebook. You can find it at facebook.com. And you can search for Genevieve Bergman. Or you can search for the hashtag, hashtag, hashtag Genie Views Reviews. And it's just, I play with words all the time, and so that was fun for me because Genie V is my tags uh, for games and for Twitter, and well, not for Twitter, but for Twitch. And it's part of my logins for so many other things like Discord. I've got Genie V1229. And so Genie's Views Reviews, uh, Genie Views Reviews is giving me the Genie V part. And then the Views Reviews, I'm going to kind of open that up to television and theater, movies, books, comics. I'm going to kind of open it up a little bit. And I'm going to eventually segue that into Twitch because one of the things that happens whenever I watch a movie, especially with my youngest son, is we get into a very drawn out, very in-depth debate and conversation about what we watched. And so, hashtag, it's not hashtag, hashtag, I'm just not speaking very well. So, Julie, it's hashtag genie views reviews. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, yeah. Hashtag Genie Views Reviews. There we go. That's the hashtag. Search for that on Facebook and you'll be able to um, see last night's movie of choice, which was Wonder Woman 1984. Without spoiling all of the review and all of the justifications for it, I will just tell you this much, I hated it. If I never watch Wonder Woman 1984 again, I don't think that I will miss much in life. But uh, go check that out on Facebook. You'll see what it is. It's a lengthy review. I don't write short stuff. 
So, um, also, if you don't follow me on Instagram or Facebook, I try to do a daily check-in with everybody to kind of let them know what's going on. And uh, lately, I've been doing wigless posts. Um, I share a picture on Instagram, and yesterday and today, I did it without my wig. Now, I had full makeup. Uh, I've done... I've done my male face before and my bald head, but lately I've been doing, yeah, a wig less posting. And I kind of like it. I really do kind of like the look of it. Yeah, mixed reviews. I, I heard some good, I heard some bad. I, I really didn't hear anything saying it was in the middle, it was pretty much everybody either liked it or didn't like it. And Andrew, my youngest, and I, neither one of us cared for it. We, we don't want to have anything to do with it. My wife, on the other hand, she enjoyed it. And so she was kind of curious about why my son and I didn't care for it. I'll be right back. I need some forks to shred my chicken. So I'm just off screen. I'm not going to be going long. But she wanted to know why we didn't like that at all. She thought it was a, a good movie. It, it made her cry. And uh, I used to laugh at her for crying at movies. I don't do that now. Uh, mostly because she's laughing at me crying at movies now. Uh, <laughs> but... Uh, she found some she found some moments in that that she really connected with emotionally and so she felt that Andrew and I were very were being very harsh about it but if you read my review you'll see that it was in my opinion well justified yeah DC's DC's struggling, I think, to to find its message. I think that they have a I think they have a problem of resolving. Do they want to be serious storytellers, or do they want to find the comedy? Do they want to do they want to try to be like Marvel? Because Marvel has done a great job of telling serious stories with a balance of comedy. And DC, just for some reason, has not been able to do that. Now, don't get me wrong. There have been some DC movies that I've loved. Aquaman, hilarious. Fantastic movie. Uh, very active and, and exciting stuff. But, you know, it, has, it had its problems. It was a fun movie. Wonder Woman 1984 was not fun. It could have been fun, but it just didn't make it. It didn't get there. I was a little sad for that, because I, I did like the first Wonder Woman movie. And since coming out, Wonder Woman is one of my icons that I come back to. I don't think I have a right to claim her as... A favorite hero, um, mostly because I'm not, you know, I'm not wanting to be seen as jumping on the bandwagon. Yeah, Jess, um, Aquaman is okay. Shazam was, I don't know, it had some sticking points, but I think it was an okay movie. I'm, I'm scared <laughs> of the Snyder Cut of Justice League that's coming out. I, I didn't absolutely hate Justice League. I didn't fall in love with Justice League. But, I'm, you know, I just don't know what's going to happen when they release that 
whatever it is, that Frankenstein of a movie that's going to be released under Zack Snyder's name. But yeah, DC's struggling a bit. Yeah, it did have Chuck. <laughs> that was a show I never watched. Uh, I think it was... It had finally moved to, like, syndication and was on sci-fi or something back when sci-fi actually showed science fiction shows before the great dark ages of professional wrestling. But I never got into it when, when Chuck was first broadcast. So I'm not a huge fan of uh, Levy. But I thought, you know, the movie was kind of cute. Yeah, Julie, and I think, I think that's what, I think ultimately that's what Wonder Woman 1984 does, is they miss so many opportunities, and I think Patty Jenkins is, is the right person to direct Wonder Woman. I think she has a great eye for the character. I don't think the writers were on board. I don't think the writers knew what to do with the story concept that was presented to them. I just think that they completely missed all of the solid good points that they could have made total amazing movie out of. Alright, so, I have my Two chicken breasts, two whole chicken breasts, now shredded up. It's into the bowl with my peas, carrots, potatoes, and cream of chicken soup. Now a little bit of onion powder. Yeah. See, now Jess, I think that's a great description of it. Dark and bleak without human impact. And that, for some odd reason, okay. Now I'm going to get into why I'm a Marvel instead of a DC. For me, Marvel has always told stories that allowed people like me to identify with. Peter Parker was just a kid having normal kid problems. And even when Pete was in the Spider-Man costume, with all of his power and all of his abilities, people still did not accept him. And you know, for a kid who couldn't accept themselves, who struggled to be accepted in the community that I was in, who just really never found a place to fit in, Peter Parker just leapt out to me as somebody I could identify with. I didn't need to see a God figure flying around, able to do miraculous stuff, and seemingly never really having any kind of issues. What I needed to see was somebody like me. Somebody who could not get through a day without feeling worthless sometimes. Somebody who couldn't, who couldn't find another person to share troubles with. And so, for me, Marvel always hit that spot that DC never did. Let's see. Yeah. I agree, Jess. I mean, Birds of Prey, I think, was a different movie. Uh, I did enjoy it. Uh, but, I don't know. I kind of... I'm going to have to think about that one. Come back to it. Alright, let's see. Uh, Thor is funny. I like this drink. I want another smash. Yeah. 
The original Thor, okay, this is how I described the original Thor when I saw it. The first Thor movie was the best Superman movie ever made. And the moment I knew it was the best Superman movie ever made is the scene where Thor is uh, soaring along the Rainbow Bridge to fight the Frost Giants. And there he is in all of his red and blue glory flying, quote-unquote, flying through the air. And I knew right then, okay, this is Superman. And then he starts battling Frost Giants, who are real giants. And he waylays on them. And that is like, okay, that's a Superman movie. So, yeah. Um, Jess, I mean, when I watched Superman Returns, I was never so angry with a Superman movie as I was with that one. Here you have Lex Luthor, the arch nemesis of Superman. And what happens? Superman gets beat by a rock. And look, I know Kryptonite has been a part of the story since very early in the telling, back in the Superboy days. But the absurdity that they used Kryptonite in Superman Returns just frustrated me to no end. And that's kind of when I spun out on... DC was actually with Superman Returns. Julie, I've never seen, I've not seen the Joker movie yet. Believe it or not. How much I don't really care for DC. Yes, I am eating my cheese, so. And it is tasty. My pizza that I had for lunch is long gone. All right, so I put my cheddar cheese, sharp cheddar cheese, right on top. And here's the thing. Whenever I cook this and I get it out, I just portion it up and I put it on my plate, I will put another big helping of sharp cheddar cheese right on top of it so it gets ooey and gooey and delicious right there. All right, so, yeah, one of my puppies wandered through here. I was... I was I was ranting, and so I wasn't paying attention to which one it was. Probably Ollie. I need to watch the Joker movie just because I've heard some amazing stuff about it, but I, I don't care for the Joker. I think the Joker is... I think the Joker is just a sad, sad character. There's... He's a one-trick pony, quite honestly. Okay. I put the top crust on, and what I'm doing is I'm crimping the top crust with just my fingertips into the edge of the bottom crust. Um, that way it kind of forms a seal, and it cooks inside, and the juice that is in there is going to give it a little bit more flavor when it gets done. I need a knife. Heath Ledger Joker was amazing. I mean, I agree that that was probably Heath Ledger's greatest performance. He was... He brought a sense of unpredictability to the Joker that I don't think anyone has written that well. And, yeah, Heath Ledger, I think, was phenomenal. By the way, when you cut the crust off the top, just so you can get the lid on a little bit later, one of the things that I will do sometimes is I like crust, and I will put the crust right down on top and give it an extra edge so that, you know, if it's cooking and it gets nice and crispy, it uh, gives you a little more crust to chew on whenever you're portioning it up. All right, so... Around, around, and this way. Just pinch that on. All right. Now, that's it, right there. This is going to go into the oven. Now, I'm not using my big oven. I'm putting this in my countertop oven. 
Because what I found is that this does a really great job of cooking my stuff a little bit quicker. Now, I don't want it at 425. I'm going to go ahead and put it at 375, and I'm going to put it on for 25 minutes. And this is going to heat up a little bit and get that ready, and then it'll start. So it's probably a little bit closer to 30 minutes. When that gets done, I will switch it over and try to heat it from the top a little bit more so that I can crust, make that crust on top really, really crunchy and, and flaky. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad I was able to give you some relief there, Jess. Uh, yeah, I'm, I've heard a lot about the portrayal, you know, that, that Phoenix does do with the Joker. Uh, again, it's just, you know, not my character. Yeah, Jill. Um, my first comic books were Spider-Man and The Defenders and Daredevil. I still have original copies of those comic books that I probably traded with somebody when I was in second or third grade. And, I, and the reason why I know this is I, I left Wichita, Kansas in the third grade. And I didn't, from third grade to fourth grade, I moved from Wichita, Kansas to southeastern Oklahoma. And there were no comic book places in southeastern Oklahoma. And so, therefore, not that many people were into them. So, I have to put these comic books somewhere in my time when I lived in Wichita. And I probably traded them with a kid there at school. But I have an issue of... Daredevil that features a guest appearance by my favorite Marvel superhero, Nova, Richard Ryder. And I have a copy, a partial copy, and there's not much left to it, but it has some important parts to it. A copy of the Defenders that guest stars the original Guardians of the Galaxy. And I don't mean Star-Lord. Uh, this goes back to the original Yondu, the original... Starhawk, the original Charlie 27, and Martine X. And, yeah, those stories are great. There's a Doctor Strange and Hulk and Guardians of the Galaxy are all in that book. And it's really kind of fun story about being on a different planet and interacting with the Badoon, who are a set of villains from the Guardians of the Galaxy, which is far in the future. But uh, those two I still have. I also have, not, not that I've kept it this long, I was actually able to get this from Lisa's sister, but I have a copy of the original um, Treasury versions of Star Wars from when they came out in 1970. I think they came out in 78. They may have come they may have come out in 77. I can't remember when the treasure the big ones, not the not the normal size comic. These are, you know, the the Whitman size, I mean they're the big ones. Um, but I had one of those that orig originally and I was able to get some of those again uh, because of my sister-in-law. Iron Man. The first Iron Man movie I felt was perhaps the I felt that that, one, that movie took me back to Michael Keaton's Batman. Uh, it took me back to 1980 1989 to that Batman movie watch those characters come alive like they did in Batman. It did on, you know, it happened on Iron Man. So, yeah, I like that one. <laughs> oh, Jess, uh, you should have seen me when I got finished watching Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and what they did to Yondu and Starhawk. I will never, 
ever forgive James Gunn for. Ever. So. Although, I will say that Michael Rooker had the most amazing line in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. But yeah, James Gunn, he's in a lot of trouble with me. Now, I have two pieces of chicken left in here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to shred those up. They are going to be for my dogs. I'm also going to use a little bit of that chicken broth. I'll probably save it, and it will go into their dog food too. So I try to I try to salvage as much of this stuff as I can. Use it for something else, especially with the dogs, because, yes, I do feed them regular dog food. In fact, they do have special... Um, dog food for sensitive stomachs because Dinah, my Doberman, and Kobe, my Badger Pig, they all have, they both have allergies that we've really struggled to keep under control. And I'm trying right now by cutting out some of the cheap filler brand style dog food. So I'm using some sensitive diet, but my dogs don't like dry dog food. They want something else in there. So what I do is I'll take a little bit of the protein for supper. Usually, you know, maybe a quarter of a cup or less. And especially if it's something that has fluids, um, beef broth, chicken broth, stocks, something like that. And I'll add that to their food just to flavor it a little bit and entice them to eat. So that's what's going to happen with the rest of this. I am going to log off and make room for the Valkyries coming up on the Transgender Show channel and then Transvengers coming up a little bit later tonight. I'm probably going to do another cooking stream at some point over the weekend, maybe on Saturday. I'll try to come up with something fun. I've got some ribs that I need to do something with down in the freezer, so I may try that. And I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to try to kick over... Um, this channel is a segue into some other content. I'll be doing cooking streams, but I'm also going to be doing some movie reviews. I'm going to be gaming soon because I just upgraded my computer and it almost seems like it is stable. And I'll be able to do some game streaming. I especially want to do some Fallen Order and Pathway. That's another game I have up. I've been playing Stranded Deep, which is sort of a survival type game. But yeah, I'm going to bring some other content to my channel and boost it up a little bit. Plus, I'm going to try to maybe tie everything together. My medias um, are going to try to come together in a little bit more coherent way. I've kind of been just twiddling with one and then with another. But I'm going to bring it all together in some way so that I can just feed off of each other. So, y'all keep an eye out. Thank you so much for coming tonight and being a part of the stream. The chicken pot pie is going to be done in about 30 minutes. I'm going to put some pictures up in Discord on a couple of different channels that I frequent. And, of course, it'll be up on my channels. Oh, now see, there you go, Jess. You just had to start. Um, I think the primary thing they got stuck on in the Marvel Universe was the absolutely stunning amount of resources S.H.I.E.L.D. had. Aircraft carriers cost ludicrous, cost ludicrous amounts and have thousands of crew, and S.H.I.E.L.D. had several, and were building three new ones. Without even throwing in the fact that they could fly, that makes them maybe the second largest military in the world, and they're a spy agency. I agree with you so completely. And on top of that, you have... You don't just have a military, a spy military, an intelligence military, which doesn't make sense at all, but you also have the most technically advanced advanced individual, Stark, running in direct competition with S.H.I.E.L.D., and, you know, maybe they are going to come back and they're going to do the Armor Wars storyline at some point in the future, 
where whoever is the iron person in the future has to go through and salvage the Stark Tech brand. But you're right. I mean, now I will say that the the scene in the first Avengers movie where Sam Jackson gets in the fight with the, the Cavill, the, the inner circle, I can't remember who they're called. Uh, they're called the jugglers in the G.I. Joe universe. But where Jackson gets in, gets in a fight with them shows just how ludicrous S.H.I.E.L.D. is. It's not just a, a an intelligence military, but it is a global intelligence military. And there's a lot of problems with that. But don't even get me started with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., an amazing television series. If you've not watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., go back and pick it up. It is so good, and the farther they went into it, the better it got. It is just out of this world how good that is. I am so sad that they never tied the television universe with the cinematic universe beyond just a couple of drop-ins, but it was so good. Okay, you're right, Jess. You get me started on that stuff, and I'll launch. Uh, <laughs> the World Council, thank you. Yes. Re it's so good. Um, it would be wonderful if Daisy came into the cinematic universe. And no, you you don't have to be sorry. You get me talking about comic books, and that's maybe that's one of the things I just need to do is launch over into comic book media uh, show. All right, so there. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sign off with that. Thank you all so much for coming by. Stick around over on uh, Valkyries on the transgender for Valkyries over on transgendershow.twitch.com or twitch.tv slash transgender show and then uh, trans Avengers coming up a little bit later tonight with guest star Casey Blake thank you all so much you all have a good day good night take care